Oh, well, shalom, Rastafari. Now, the Bible says that Moses was learned in the wisdom of the Egypts or the Egyptians, and he was mighty in word and deed. Therefore, <clears throat> when we're speaking about the Bible, there's a lot of interpretations and assumptions about what it's really saying, whether it's real or whether it's unreal, the atheist versus the agnostic and atheist versus the Gnostic argument, those who know the truth and seek to know the truth. The Moshia, the black Moshia say, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. But why is all there this confusion about Bible interpretation? I thought this was interesting, this motif here between the two mountains, the sun between the two mountains, very Egyptian, whether this is unconscious or not. The scriptures clearly speaks to us and says that Moses was learned in the wisdom of the Egypts. The wisdom was what some Egyptologists will call the mystery schools. All right? So, therefore, a lot of the biblical um, interpretation and ancient Egyptian um, interpretation or Egyptology is patently false and, and wrong. So... What we have is um, misinterpretation, lost in translation. And I always want to show just briefly, you know, based on a couple of um, a couple of clicks, what was revealed to. Okay, here we go. Right here, we got the cursor. Right, what was revealed to I, and to prove that the Bible when properly interpreted in ancient Egypt, when properly interpreted, can give us the truth. We can get the truth of the true biblical understanding that both proves the Torah of Moses, of Moshe, was correct. And where a lot of folks are going wrong is because they're getting caught up in this false paradigm. Right, this false paradigm that ancient Egyptians were all idolatry, all idol worshippers, and the Hebrews, you know, like the movies. Basically, Hollywood has fooled the people. And I saw this. Um, I saw this here in looking up uh, the ancient symbol of Re, falsely called Ra, and this is that ancient symbol right there. We want to touch on that a little bit more, right? And also to touch on. Um, this sun-like um, star, this sun-like star. And it will also prove why Yahweh, within the scripture, said that the priests had gone astray and they, was, they turned their backs and they was worshiping the physical sun, right, which the Hebrews did not worship the physical sun, but it's this sun-like star. Right now, we have to begin with ancient Egypt. We got to begin with ancient Egypt because the author of our story, speaking of the first five books of the Bible, was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. So, if you think you can just pick up the Bible and figure it out, perhaps certain things moral, certain things basic, but the real overstanding is for those who are learned in the same wisdom. And what I've been noticing, even though Egyptology wasn't, uh, you know, I'm curious. I like the pictures and stuff like that, so forth and so on. The fact that they're black and, you know, we can make that point and that argument, which has been turned totally full tilt on its head, you know, is very good on the cultural um, level and on the, let's call it, on the knowledge of black people, you know, seeing that so many stereotypes, you know, COINTELPRO has been put out to stop this rise of, of, of the Messiah, the black Messiah, or Christ, as the Bible says, being formed within us. And it's interesting because we can also connect the whole chemtrails to it and a lot of the things that's being done in the environment to really block this spiritual light. But the true light is within this true sun-like star is our soul. But right here, you remember in ancient in, in the Bible we have in the beginning Elohim, according to the Masoretic um, Hebrew Elohim. Right now, Elohim, interestingly enough, is also used for gods. So there's a majestic plural, whereas he also in the language. 
Sometimes Elohim is used as he in a in a singularity. Um, and other places it's used for the false gods. So how do we distinguish this? It's according to the interpretation. Right? See this this is the key thing. We're dealing with the primary elements when we look at ancient Egypt. The truth is there, but it's the interpretation, right, that has been misinterpreted. So I start to look at this right here. This um speaking of the original um, we can say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These original nine, right? And when you now study in the Bible, Moses' first book, we have Re. Now, Re or Ra, right, is found in the scriptures, El Roi. Um, Hagar, she mentions El Roi. Um, Abraham, he says um, Yahweh Yere, or probably more correctly, um, Elohim Yere, because that name was said not to be known according to Moses' second book. But in the first book, we have Abraham um, calling upon the God or Theos, right, the operating system, as Yere or Jehovah Jireh. Some Christians probably know it as Jehovah Jireh. But Yere is very interesting because when we speak about Are, since we're on this subject matter, because without this basic um, understanding, then much of what we are reading, we can understand what's written in the basic sense, but we're going to fall into these misinterpretations, and it's almost like um, compartmentalization in a sense. Okay, that's Egypt. Okay, that's the Bible. But Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egypt, so did he not know what this was about? Well, it's obvious that he did. So here we have a ray, right? A ray. And this is interesting. Wayne Herschel has this particular, his book, Wayne Herschel, Hidden, I think, Rackets. And I would advise one to check out Wayne Herschel's um, research. I think he's come very much close to it, you know, looking at the evidence and presenting some um, verifiable theories right, and, and therefore um, fact as well. So this is what's called the lost symbol. But we wanted to actually take this symbol and explain more about the soul, right, and also Tiferet, which is the Hebrew Tafari, because ultimately we're going to come to the fullness of Rastafari revelation and this connection with Re as we have here. But this is also a symbol of man, right, or the divine man, God in man, the Tiferet, right, Sifera, Sifarot, the, 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 the chakra or the um, Sifera, right, according to the Kabbalah right there. But let's just go through the Adams family, right? Let's just go through the Adams family. We'll pick up hopefully on this much more. But we want to show this particular symbol here. And then also take a look at this particular symbol here. Now, in other cultures, we see it like this. But this is much, much later when we start to get to the original from ancient Egypt. So the context of the Bible must properly be understood with a, a, a knowledge, as Moses is a gnosis, of the wisdom of the Egypts. Right? And not to... Um, bias it with a lot of these different um, misinterpretations that the Western Gentiles have been subjected, and many of us have to actually go through this. We have to part that Red Sea in order to get to the real promised land, the real Gnosis. All right? So the array, the array right there. All right? And we're going to explain much more on this, but first of all, it's connected with the Scriptures. Right? And even when you think of the seraphim, they were fiery serpents right there in the, in the Bible. So this, these motifs, this symbolism, this symbology is biblical. But what folks are getting confused, either the ancient Egypt or what Egyptology uh, misinterprets by and large is ancient Egypt. You know, we have the whitewash on that level, and they've done the, they misinterpreted the obvious racial African-Ethiopian identification of the ancient Egyptians. What have they done 
with the knowledge, right? If they, if the obvious they have twisted and misinterpreted, then what's not so obvious is also a obvious misinterpretation. All right, so we're going to probably hold it right here and catch up with part two, right? But in the scriptures, this would be known as a Roy or Roy, R-O-I, right? And also Yere, which both means to see. It means to see or vision, the Rai, revelation, as well as um, Yere, right, from shepherd to shepherd, when we say Adonai, Yahweh, he who be who he be, is my shepherd. All right? So this particular symbology has much meaning when it's properly and rightly interpreted. This is Wendem Yadam. This is Ross Iadonis reporting for LOJ Society.